Good evening. This is Sleep Chamber. I'm Henrik. I don't live where you live. Probably my accent is <laughs> sort of foreign. But it doesn't matter because this doesn't have anything to do with accents. These are just words meant to put you to sleep. I hope you had a good day. And I hope you'll have an even better night. This is a podcast who, whose sole purpose is to help you fall asleep. The words you're about to hear don't really matter. I'm not going to put any particular intent behind them. I'm not going to ask you to visualize meadows or butterflies. I'm just going to say words and put them in a row. And your only job is to think what you think in whatever manner you see fit. Because it is what it is. What happens, happens. And as for now, there is nothing we can do. On a sunny Tuesday morning, I was awakened by the sound of birds chirping outside my window. I lazily got out of bed, feeling well-rested and happy. I walked to my window and opened the curtains, letting the bright sunlight fill the room. I took a deep breath and smiled, feeling grateful for another beautiful day. My dog jumped on my bed, excited to start the day. I laughed and scratched his head, then got dressed and went downstairs. I made myself a cup of coffee and sat down at the kitchen table, enjoying the quiet morning. On a sunny Tuesday morning, my old teacher told me a tale. She said that when she was young, she used to love going on adventures. One time, she and her friends went exploring in the forest and got lost. They wandered around for hours until they finally found their way home. She said it was one of the most thrilling experiences of her life. Ever since then, she's always been drawn to sunny Tuesday mornings. They remind her of the time when she was young and carefree, and she feels grateful to have those memories. Today I want to have an adventure like that. I want to explore and see something new. I'll take my dog with me and we'll go on a hike. We'll follow the trail and see where it takes us. Maybe we'll get lost, but it'll be fun. I'm excited to see what this sunny Tuesday morning has in store for me. I got dressed and went outside, enjoying the warm weather. I took my dog for a walk and we ended up at the forest. We followed the trail and got lost, but it was fun. We saw a deer and a fox and a rabbit. I was reminded of my old friend and her story about going to Spain by train. The train was loud and the ride was bumpy, but she enjoyed the view as they sped through the countryside. 
she was excited to finally be able to see the places she had only dreamed of visiting. When they arrived at their destination, she was disappointed to find that the city was not what she had expected. It was dirty and crowded, and she couldn't wait to leave. But then she saw a restaurant that looked interesting, and she decided to give it a try. The food was amazing, and she was so glad she had decided to give the city another chance. She learned that day that sometimes you have to look past the surface to find the beauty in things. She continued to walk around town, and she found that there was so much more to it than she had first thought. The city was full of life, and she eventually came to love it. She saw a town square where people were dancing and laughing. She joined in, and she danced the night away. She realized that the city was not what she had expected, but it was still a beautiful place. She learned to dance salsa, and she made many new friends. She even fell in love with a man from the city, and they were married a year later. She never forgot the lesson she learned that day, and she continued to look for the beauty in everything. I was so tired from my hike that I decided to head back home. I was halfway home when it started to rain. But the beautiful kind of rain, the type of rain that makes you feel clean and like a new start. I walked a little faster, feeling the droplets fall on my face and wondering if anyone else was out walking in this weather. The rain was coming down harder now, and I could see puddles forming on the pavement. I love the rain. But it is no longer a sunny Tuesday. I was soaked by the time I got home, and my clothes were sticking to my skin. I stripped off my clothes and stood in the shower, letting the water wash away the day. I've had an adventure today. I walked in the rain. I saw the forest. After the shower, I went to my kitchen to make a cup of tea. My grandmother was British. She taught me how to make proper tea. The first thing you need to do is boil some water. Then, you'll need a teapot and some tea bags. Put the desired number of tea bags into the teapot and pour the boiling water over them. Let the tea steep for three minutes, five minutes, depending on how strong you like it. Finally, add milk and sugar to taste and enjoy. My grandmother was raised in the south of London so she would have a strong cup of tea with milk and sugar. My grandfather was raised in the north of England so he would have a weak cup of tea with milk and no sugar. My aunt would make us all tea every morning. It was so strong and sweet that I would get a sugar high and then fall asleep. I always have weird dreams when I fall asleep after a super high. I once dreamed that I was a chicken. I was running around a farm, and every time I would lay an egg, a farmer would come and take it away. In another dream, I was flying high in the sky. The sun was shining and the breeze was blowing. 
I felt so free and happy. I was soaring over the clouds and the world below looked so small. I could see everything so clearly and it was so beautiful. I flew over the pyramids. In this dream, I was symbolically free from the worries and concerns of the material world. I was able to see things from a higher perspective and appreciate the beauty of the world. This dream could represent a desire for transcendence or a need for a more spiritual perspective. In another dream, I was in a dark forest. I was walking through the woods and it was so dark I could barely see where I was going. I felt like I was being watched and I was getting scared. Then I saw a light up ahead and I started walking towards it. As I got closer, I could see that the light was coming from a cabin in the woods. I went inside and it was so warm and cozy. There was a fire burning in the fireplace and I felt so safe. Opening Christmas presents as a child is magical. There's something about unwrapping a present and not knowing what's inside that makes Christmas so special. As a kid, I would always get excited about opening presents on Christmas morning. I would rip open the wrapping paper as fast as I could and then try to guess what was inside. I would always be so surprised and excited when I found out what I got. It was always such a magical moment. One of the best presents I got as a child was a bicycle. I remember being so excited to ride it around the neighborhood with my friends. It was the best feeling in the world. Opening presents on Christmas is definitely one of the best parts about the holiday. My dogs wakes me from my daydreaming about England and Christmas. I take my cup of tea and sit on the couch. I take a sip of the tea and close my eyes. I feel so tired, I feel like I could fall asleep right now. I put the cup down on the coffee table and lay down. I close my eyes and relax and drift into sleep and start to dream peacefully. I am in a beautiful garden with bright flowers everywhere. The sun is shining and the sky is blue. I am surrounded by my family and friends, and we are all laughing and talking together. There is a rainbow in the sky, and it is so bright that it almost hurts my eyes to look at it. I can hear the sound of birds singing, and the breeze is blowing through the trees. I see a river in the distance, and it is so clear that I can see the bottom. The water is flowing slowly and calmly. I am surrounded by love and happiness, and I feel so content. I walk to the river and dip my toes in the water. It is so refreshing and cool. I splash some water on my face and it feels wonderful. I sit down on the bank of the river and enjoy the peacefulness of this place. I close my eyes and let the sun warm my face. I am so happy here, and I never want to leave. 
My dog comes running towards me, and I open my eyes. He is wagging his tail and looks so happy. I pet him and he licks my face. I get up and walk around, taking in all the beauty of this place. I decide to go swimming in the river. I take a deep breath and dive into the water. I swim down to the bottom and then back up again. I come up for air and then swim to the other side of the river. Suddenly I see a mermaid swimming towards me. She is so beautiful and she has a fish tail. She comes up to me and kisses me on the cheek. Then she takes my hand and leads me down to the bottom of the river. We swim together for a while, and then she leads me back to the surface. I take a deep breath and smile. The mermaid introduces herself as Alice, and she tells me that she has been watching me. She says that she knows I am special and that I have a great destiny. She tells me to follow her, and she leads me to a door in the side of the river. We swim through the door and into a beautiful underwater cave. Inside the cave there is a treasure chest, and Alice tells me to open it. I open the chest and inside there is a golden necklace with a diamond pendant. Alice tells me that this necklace is very special and that it will protect me from harm. She puts the necklace around my neck and kisses me on the cheek again. Then she leads me back to the door and we swim out of the cave. We say goodbye to each other, and I swim back to the shore. I get out of the water and lie down on the bank of the river. The necklace is a silver necklace with a small pendant in the shape of a heart. The heart has a stone in it that is blue in color. The stones sparkle in the light. I look up from the necklace and see I see a small, one-story house with a red door. There is a green lawn in front of the house, and there are trees nearby. I see a family. I see a family of four sitting around a table in the small house. The father is reading a book. The mother is knitting, the son is playing with a toy car, and the daughter is drawing. I see a happy family. I see a happy family enjoying each other's company. They all seem to be content and at peace. I see a family that loves each other. I see a family that loves each other very much. They are always laughing and joking with each other, and they seem to really enjoy spending time together. I see a family that is close. I see a family that is very close. They share everything with each other and they are always there for each other when needed. I see a family that is happy. I see a family that is very happy. They seem to have everything they need and they are always smiling. I see a family that is content. I see a family that is content with their lives. 
They seem to be satisfied with what they have and they are not looking for anything more. I see a family that is peaceful. I see a family that is at peace with each other. They are not fighting or arguing, and they seem to be very calm. I walk over to the family. I say hello and ask how they are doing. Their cat meows. The father tells me that they are doing well and asks how I am doing. I tell him that I am doing well too. We chat for a bit about the weather and how our days are going. The mother tells me that their cat is pregnant and is due any day now. I congratulate them and ask if they are excited. They both say that they are very excited and can't wait to meet the new kittens. We say goodbye and I wish them luck with the new kittens. When I wake up the sun is out again. It has stopped raining. The sun is warm on my face. The sun is a source of light, heat, and life. It is the center of our solar system and the Earth revolves around it. The sun is essential to our existence. The Milky Way is huge. It is a spiral galaxy that contains our solar system. It is one of billions of galaxies in the universe. The Milky Way is home to billions of stars, including our sun. It is an amazing sight to behold. The universe is vast and contains an infinite amount of matter and energy. It is the sum of all things including our solar system and the Milky Way galaxy. The universe is expanding and will continue to do so forever. My dog comes up to me with a stick in his mouth and wags his tail. We go out to play fetch. I throw the stick and he runs to get it. He brings it back to me and I throw it again. I adopted my dog one year ago. He loves to chase birds. There is a lot of birds where I live. The bird sings a song. The birds sing a song of love and hope. Their song is a reminder that there is always something to look forward to, no matter what might be happening in the present moment. Their song is a sign of hope that the future will be better. I used to sing in a choir when I was younger. I love the feeling of unity and harmony that came from singing with a group of people. I always felt very connected to the music and the message that we were trying to communicate. I made a lot of friends in the choir and we would often spend time together outside of rehearsal. I remember one time we went to a park and sat in a circle on the grass. We sang songs together and shared stories. One of the members told a story. 
I used to live in a city that was always filled with the sound of car horns. It was so loud that I could never really hear myself think. I would often feel very frustrated and alone. But one day, I heard a bird singing. It was such a beautiful sound, and it made me feel so much better. I realized that even in the midst of all the noise, there was still something beautiful in the world. Since then, I've always tried to listen for the birds singing. It reminds me that there is hope, even when things are tough. Everyone was silent for a moment after the story was finished. We all looked up at the sky and listened to the birds singing. When I hear the birds, I remember that story. I think about how even in the midst of chaos and noise, there is still something beautiful in the world. The bird singing is a reminder of hope. I have always liked animals, but I have never been an animal person. I have never owned a pet, and I have never felt the need to. I have always been content to admire animals from a distance and appreciate them for the beauty and mystery that they represent. However, over the past few years, I have found myself increasingly drawn to animals and the companionship they can provide. I now have my dog, and I can't imagine my life without him. I still don't consider myself an animal person, but I have come to understand the appeal of having a pet. Animals can provide us with companionship, love, and support when we need it most. Animals can provide us with candy, beets, and furry frenzy when we need it most. And cuddles. Lots and lots of cuddles. Pets can also have a positive impact on our mental and physical health. Studies have shown that owning a pet can reduce stress, lower blood pressure, and boost immunity. Pets can also help to increase physical activity and social interaction. I don't know where I learned that. I read a lot of books, so maybe that's where I learned that. My favorite book is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. I love this book because it is a classic coming-of-age story that is both funny and thought-provoking. Holden Caulfield is a lovable protagonist who is easy to relate to, and his journey of self-discovery is both heartwarming and heartbreaking. This book has stayed with me long after I first read it, and I always find myself thinking about it when I'm going through tough times. I love to read books that teach me new things. I also love to read books that are just for fun. My aunt wrote a book about her life. It's called My Life, an autobiography. The book is about her childhood and going all the way through to her present day. She talks about her family, her friends, her experiences, and what she's learned from them. My aunt once told me that you can't keep everyone happy all the time. This is true, and it's something that I've had to learn the hard way. There will always be people in your life who will be unhappy with you, no matter what you do. 
You just have to learn to accept that and move on. One way to deal with this is to try to be the best person you can be and to be understanding of other people's feelings. Sometimes people are unhappy because of something that's going on in their own lives and it has nothing to do with you. If you can be understanding and supportive, it can help to diffuse the situation. Another way to deal with this is to simply distance yourself from the person who is unhappy with you. This isn't always possible, but if it is, it can be the best solution. Sometimes people are unhappy with you because they want something from you that you're not willing to give. If you can't or don't want to give them what they want, it's best to just walk away. It's not always easy to deal with someone who is unhappy with you, but it's important to remember that you can't please everyone all the time. Just do your best and try to be understanding and supportive. My aunt also told me about my mother's childhood. My mother was born in a small town in the England. She was the youngest of four children. Her father was a farmer and her mother was a homemaker. She had a happy childhood, but she was always a bit of a tomboy. She loved to play sports and climb trees. When she was a teenager, she began to rebel against her parents. She started dating older boys and got into trouble a lot. Her parents were very strict, so she ran away from home when she was 16. She moved to the city and got a job as a waitress. She met my father a few months later and they got married a year later. They had me when my mother was 18. My aunt told me that my mother was always a very independent person. She was never afraid to speak her mind or stand up for herself. She was a strong woman, and she taught me to be the same. Once my aunt traveled to Bali, Once my aunt traveled to Bali and met a Buddhist monk. The Buddhist monk is a holy person who has dedicated his life to the study and practice of Buddhism. He is someone who is highly respected by the Buddhist community and is someone who is looked up to as an example of how to live a good life. He told my aunt his secret to a calm life. The secret to a calm life is to live in the present moment and to let go of the past and the future. This is the only way to truly be at peace. He also told her about his childhood in Bali. He told her about his childhood in Bali and how he loved growing up there. He told her about the beaches the culture, and the food. In Bali, they eat a lot of rice, noodles, vegetables, fruit, meat, and fish. His favorite food was ikan bakar, which is grilled fish. He went fishing with his father every Sunday morning and they would cook their catch for lunch. Once the boat hit a rock, the boat hit a rock and started to take on water. They tried to patch the hole, but the boat began to sink. Luckily, they were close to shore and began to swim towards it. 
The waves were crashing against the rocks and it was difficult to make any progress. The family helped each other and finally made it to the beach. They were all exhausted from the swim and lay on the sand to rest. After a few minutes, they got up and walked to where they had left their belongings. They were relieved to find that their things were still there. The family had a picnic lunch and then went for a walk along the beach. The sun started to set and the sky began to turn red. The clouds began to turn orange and the sun began to sink behind the horizon. The sky turned dark and the stars began to come out. The moon rose and the night began. The darkness deepened and the cold increased. The wind began to blow and the trees began to sway. They sat down and watched the night go by. My aunt also met a fortune teller who told her about her future husband and children. My aunt was very skeptical about what the fortune teller said, but she was curious to know more. The fortune teller told my aunt that she would meet her future husband at a party. My aunt laughed and said that there was no way that was going to happen. The fortune teller then said that my aunt would have three children, two boys and a girl. My aunt was surprised by this prediction, but she didn't believe it. The fortune teller was right about my aunt meeting her future husband at a party. They met at a party and got married a few years later. The fortune teller was also right about my aunt having three children. She had two boys and a girl. My aunt also told me that once she was on a plane with an old man who was making a point to explain to everyone that he was from Greece and what it was like to be Greek. Apparently, the man was very proud of his heritage and was keen to share his culture with everyone on the plane. My aunt told me that the man was very friendly and seemed to really enjoy talking to people. It sounds like the man my aunt met on the plane was a great ambassador for Greece. I have never been to Greece, but I would love to visit. The architecture, food, and history all seem very intriguing. I am also interested in the mythology and would love to see some of the places that it took place. Overall, Greece seems like a very interesting and beautiful country that I would love to explore. The story of the Greek god Zeus is one of my favorites. Zeus is the king of the gods and he defeated his father Cronus to take his place. He is also known for his many affairs with mortal women. One of his most famous children is Hercules. Hercules is a demigod, the son of Zeus and a mortal woman named Alcmene. He is famous for his twelve labors, which were tasks that he had to complete in order to atone for a crime that he had committed. The tasks was to kill the Nemean lion, to kill the nine-headed Lernaean hydra, to capture the golden hind of Artemis, to capture the Arimanthian boar, 
to clean the audience tables in a single day. To kill the Stymphalian birds. To capture the Cretan bull. To steal the mares of Deomes. To obtain the girdle of Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons to steal the cattle of the three-headed giant Gion. To fetch the apples of the Hesperides. To capture and bring back Cerberus, the three-headed dog of Hades. My dog's name is Hercules. Hercules is a large, muscular dog with a short coat of black fur. He is a gentle giant who loves to play fetch and go for long walks. He sleeps next to me every night and always greets me with a wagon tail when I come home. He really likes all kinds of food, but his favorite food is sushi. He also really enjoys Thai food, Chinese food, and Indian food. He always tries to sneak a few pieces when I have it for dinner. He only has three legs. He can still run, play, and enjoy life just like any other dog. Three legs are better than two. I love all music, but I especially love opera music. There is something about the way that the voices soar through the air that just speaks to my soul. I also love the stories that are often told through opera music. They are usually very dramatic and emotional, and I just can't get enough of them. My favorite opera is Carmen by George's Bizet. The story is so passionate and intense, and the music is just beautiful. I also love La Boheme by Giacomo Puccini. It is such a tragic and romantic story, and the music is just so gorgeous. It is about love and loss, and it just always hits me right in the feels. I could go on and on about all the operas that I love, but these are just a few of my favorites. If you have never listened to opera music before, I urge you to give it a try. I think you will be surprised at how much you enjoy it. Opera music is truly a special and unique art form that everyone should experience at least once in their life. Maybe I should write an opera about a young woman who is trying to find her place in the world. The young woman, who is the protagonist of the opera, is trying to find her place in the world. She is searching for meaning and purpose in her life and she is trying to figure out who she is and what she wants to do with her life. The opera follows her journey as she tries to find her way in the world and discover her true identity. The opera could be called The Search for Self. The main character in the story would be Linda, a young woman who is struggling to find her place in the world. She is searching for something to give her life purpose and meaning, and she thinks that maybe she will find it by becoming a mother. Linda is a kind and caring person, but she is also flawed and human. She makes mistakes and has to learn from them. 
just like everyone does. Someday I want to see Italy. I want to see the Colosseum in Rome, the canals in Venice, and the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I love pasta and pizza. I also want to see the Amalfi Coast and the city of Florence. I think it would be amazing to see all of the art and history that Italy has to offer. I'm not sure when I'll be able to go, but I hope to see Italy someday. In the meantime, I'll just have to enjoy Italian food from my home country. I have a friend that lives in France. We met in high school and I've been friends ever since. We keep in touch by texting, emailing, and sending each other letters. I last saw her when she came to visit me two years ago. We went to a zoo and then a museum. I was really excited to see the animals, but my favorite part was when we got to feed the giraffes. We fed them leaves and carrots, and they were really gentle. They're weird animals, but I really like them. Another weird animal is the okapi. The okapi is a strange looking animal that is related to the giraffe. The okapi is found in the forests of the Congo Basin in Africa. We also saw lions. And a tiger. And I got to see the baby lions and a baby elephant and a baby zebra and some baby antelope thingies and a baby giraffe and I got to feed a sheep and then we went to have lunch And then we went to the petting zoo. And I got to feed a baby goat. And then we went back to the zoo. And we got to see the baby lions again. And some more baby lions. And another baby lion. And then we got to see a baby warthog. I remember when my dog was a puppy, he would chase cars. He was so cute and playful, and I would always have to chase after him to make sure he didn't get hit. Eventually, I taught him to stop chasing cars and he grew out of that face. Sometimes I miss the puppy years even though I'm so glad they're gone. I remember when my dog was a puppy and I used to have to carry him up and down the stairs because he couldn't do it himself. I used to have to wake up in the middle of the night to take him out to go to the bathroom. I remember the first time he met another dog and he was so scared. I also remember the first time he met a cat and he chased it up a tree. The cat never came down from that tree. Or maybe it did, but I didn't see it. My mom had a cat when I grew up. The cat's name was Mittens. 
Mittens was a black and white cat. I was kind of scared of Mittens. I was scared of all cats, actually. I'm not really sure why. I remember one time I was playing in the backyard and Mittens came out from under the porch and scared me. I think my mom had to give Mittens away eventually because he started getting old and grumpy. Can't say I was sad when she gave him away. I was probably about 10 years old at the time. Looking back, I wish I would have been nicer to Mittens. I should have given him more chances. Maybe I should buy a cat and name it Mittens. It would be good company for my dog. I think I will go to the animal shelter this weekend and look for a cat. Sometimes I think about adopting a bunch of animals, but then I remember that I can barely take care of myself, let alone a bunch of pets. Or well, too, if I get a cat. My father once said, hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. Hardship and difficult times can often be a test or a preparation for something greater that lies ahead. It can help to build character and strength and help people to become more resilient. Sometimes people who go through tough experiences can come out the other side stronger and more capable than they ever thought possible and end up achieving great things. I'm pretty sure that I would be a great magician. I have always been fascinated by magic and I have a very active imagination which would be perfect for creating illusions. I'm also very good at keeping secrets, so I could definitely keep all the secrets of my magic tricks to myself. Overall, I think that I would be a great magician and I would love to perform for others and make them believe in the impossible. I would wear a top hat. I would wear a black cape. I would carry a magic wand. I would wear a black tuxedo. Maybe I need to get a rabbit for my tricks. But then I would have three animals. I went to a magic show when I was a kid. I don't remember much about it, but I do remember that I was really excited to see the magician perform. I remember that he did a lot of tricks with cards and coins and I was really amazed by how he was able to make things disappear and reappear. He also had a really fun personality and was really good at engaging with the audience. After the show ended, I got to meet him backstage and he signed my autograph. Autographs are funny things. You see, when you're a kid, Getting an autograph from someone you admire is a really big deal. But as you get older, you start to realize that autographs are just pieces of paper with someone's name on them. They don't really mean anything. But even though I know that now, I still cherish the autograph that the magician signed for me all those years ago. I never learned how to write a cool autograph like his though. I always just sign my name.
I wish I had paid more attention to how he did it. Oh well, maybe one day I'll learn. You know the saying you should learn something new every day. Sometimes I don't do that. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. I think it is. It's good to keep your mind active and learning new things. I do solve Sudokus whenever I can, and that's a good way to learn new things too. I also read a lot, and that helps me learn new things as well. I think the important thing is to keep your mind active and engaged in learning, no matter what form that takes. I would spend hours browsing the shelves and checking out books. The library was always a peaceful and calming place for me. I loved the smell of the books and the way they felt in my hands. I would bring home stacks of books and spend my weekends reading them. I still love going to the library and I try to go as often as I can. There is something special about being surrounded by so many books. It makes me feel happy and nostalgic. I hope to instill a love of reading in my own children someday. The library was a big part of my childhood and it holds a lot of memories for me. I think it is cool that a limited amount of letters can create millions of stories. Sometimes I get sad because I won't be able to read all the books in the world. There are so many great books out there, and it's impossible to read them all. When I was young I dreamed about having a library in my house. With a ladder. That went up to the ceiling. And I would just climb up and read all the books. Now I realize that there's no way I could ever read all the books in the world. But that doesn't stop me from trying. I'm always looking for new books to read, and I'm always happy when I find a new favorite. Sometimes I read out loud to my dog. I'm not sure if my dog likes it when I read out loud to him, but he doesn't seem to mind. Sometimes he will come and sit next to me while I'm reading, and sometimes he'll just lay down nearby. I think he enjoys the sound of my voice, and it seems to help him relax. The dog sleeps in my bed, even though I know some people don't like that. But he likes it, and I like it too. It's just one of those things. I know that some people don't think it's clean to have a dog sleep in the bed, but I don't mind. I think it's actually quite sweet. Plus, he always sleeps on the side closest to the door, so he's like my little security guard. I would never want to sleep without him. He's part of the family. And that's how we do things in my family. We all sleep together in one big bed. And we wouldn't have it any other way. Luckily I have a big bed. So everyone can sleep together. Sometimes I have trouble with falling asleep. Well, I usually try to relax and clear my mind by focusing on my breath. 
I count my breaths and try to slow them down and make them deep. I also try to focus on a positive thought or image. My favorite thing to imagine is a serene beach with gentle waves crashing against the shore. I can feel the warmth of the sun on my skin and the sand between my toes. I am surrounded by the sound of the waves and the smell of salt in the air. This image always makes me feel calm and relaxed, and I usually fall asleep within a few minutes. Sand between my toes is one of my favorite things in the world. I love the sensation of it, and it always makes me feel happy and relaxed. I grew up going to the beach every summer, and it's one of my favorite memories. Whenever I'm feeling stressed or anxious, I close my eyes and imagine myself at the beach. It always makes me feel better. I think the sound of the waves is really soothing, and it helps me to fall asleep. I also love the smell of salt in the air. It reminds me of summer and the ocean. Whenever I'm struggling to fall asleep, I try to focus on my breath and count my breaths. I try to slow them down and make them deep. I also focus on a positive thought or image. My favorite thing to imagine is a serene beach with gentle waves crashing against the shore. I can feel the warmth of the sun on my skin and the sand between my toes. I am surrounded by the sound of the waves and the smell of salt in the air. Someday I want to learn how to surf, maybe in Costa Rica. I also want to learn how to play the piano. My dad played the piano. I never knew my dad played the piano until I was older. He never talked about it much, but I remember hearing him play a few times when I was younger. It was always a surprise to me when I would hear him playing because it was something he never did in front of us. I think he enjoyed playing the piano because it was a way for him to relax and escape from the everyday stress of life. Playing the piano was something that he could do for himself and it was a way for him to express his creative side. It is important to have something for yourself. Something that you can do that is just for you and that can help you relax and escape from the world. I'm glad that my dad had the piano because it was something special that he could share with us. Even though he didn't play it in front of us very often, it was still a part of his life that we could enjoy.